All right. Hello, hello, everyone. What up, friends? All right. And our audio is working correctly. Yay. Um, all right. Hi, everyone. Um, we don't have the Mario movie to talk about this time, so I guess we'll just sort of Hooray. jump in. Um, the yeah, casting has not changed, uh, so we still think it's shit. But... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Unless something huge would happen. I don't know, maybe. Um, and also, thank you to anyone who stuck around for our four-hour stream on Sunday. Yeah, what was that? Oh my god. <laughs> that was... How many flashbacks can you... Can you we do? were flashback and a flashback and a flashback and a flashback, and about an hour in, I was starting to realize, oh no, this is going to take a lot longer than we think. Um, <laughs> like, I, I love y'all so much, but I'm so <laughs> glad I had other things I needed to do. <laughs> like, here's the thing. Like... I don't know if it's just me, but honestly speaking, like, as much as I felt for the cast and, you know, all the characters and the tragic backstory, did we need to know the guy's backstory? Right. I think that could have been completely cut out and it would have been fine. Well, here's my question. I didn't really care about any of that. Yeah. <laughs> like, so, uh, the it was all about Kanan and, um, you know, her sort of backstory and what she was doing as she was, you know, while all of this was going on, which we basically just found out she was on a plane the entire time. Um, <laughs> in case you wanted to know, um, <laughs> like she lands like eight o'clock. Um, <laughs> and by nine o'clock she's taking down Alfred. Um, <laughs> but I really didn't need to know any of that. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it would have been better if they cut out that dude's backstory and they, um, no offense, it felt like they were stalling, you know? They mm -hmm. they just were stalling the big fight at the end. Well, like, the thing that really pushed me off was the fact that, like, one character would have a flashback and they'd cover this thing, but then another character would have a flashback at the same events. And nothing would really be different about it, but we'd still have to go through it the second time. And it was like, we know what happens. Um, I agree that Type Moon decided to write that scenario during a plane ride and refused to stop writing until the plane landed in real time, because that's what it felt like. Um. Literally, if, if, if they were on a plane for four hours, and this is what they came up with, bro. It was, it was so long. Um, so... Uh, if like, I was that... legit about to, like, stop you in the middle of the stream and be like, Listen, it's late. Can we just skip the reading of the insert things, you know, like, those yeah. little fun fact things? Like, I was legit about to say. Yeah, unfortunately, those weren't much at all. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think that was what contributed to all of our time. Um. <laughs> but it would have cut it down a little uh, bit. Yeah, it was, bit. it was a lot. So a lot of jargon too, like so much jargon. Like yeah. my throat was like dead at the end. I can imagine, yeah, because you talked for pretty much four hours. Um. I talked four hours straight about like politics and stuff, and I'm like, oh my god, my throat's not built for this. Like you talk most of the time, so I was just sitting here hitting buttons, and I am pretty sure there was one moment where I fell asleep, and you can watch me like wake up on the stream. Um. <laughs> that was great. So, like, you know, really professional of me. Um. <laughs> but at the same time, the content, if, if it's good, and that keeps you engaged in, like, guessing and, like, you know, all that stuff on the edge of your seat, that's not a problem to be there for four hours. But it was it just not. flashback after flashback after flashback. And, it was like, what? and the fact of the matter was that we knew how it had to end because it was <laughs> a flashback. Um. <laughs> like, they kept doing this whole, like, Will one of them die thing? And it's like, we have Kanan and Alfred. We know where they end up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we already played the game. Yeah, like... We know they live. If you they had made live. me do this, like, prior to playing through the game, it might have gone off a little better, but... Uh... <laughs> well, see, that's yeah. what, uh, the, uh, the argument that my old roommate had for not wanting to watch, like, any of the, the Star Wars animated stuff. Mm-hmm. Is like, well, like, we know, like, what happens to Anakin. Like, why would I want to watch that? It's like, uh, because then you can read Ahsoka Tano. Um, exactly. So, like, it's just like, oh, will they die? It's like, no. They won't. No. Yeah. And I hate it when <laughs> writers are, like, playing at it, like, 
Oh, maybe they will, maybe they won't. No, they have plot armor at this point. Like, unless you're suddenly going to bring them all back to life. And granted, we did die a lot during 428. But, yeah. details. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was a lot. I said during the stream, I was thinking about suggesting that you just read over all the dialogue regardless of how much is voice. But for the sake of Mono's Third, I'm glad I did it. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Thank yeah. you for that. Ooh. Uh, anyways, it was um, but we're not yeah. playing 428 tonight. Um, we will finish we that up next. Time. That'll be Sunday. Um, I'm over here going, what day is it today? <laughs> it is Tuesday. Uh, the monkey with the symbols in my head is just like not playing anything. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, hey, Ramaru's birthday turn up. That's all I am at right now. Uh, anyways, um, so we are at trial. Um, and Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Trials and Tribulations, Episode 3, Recipe for Turnabout. I'm getting better at saying that entire thing. <laughs> I'm not going to be, like, pro at it until the very last stream of this. You know, and then I'll be like, I conquered it. Mm-hmm. And then I'll never be able to say it again. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Don't jinx yourself. You, you know. Um, but, uh, so, lots of shit has happened. Uh, Gumshoe confirmed that the bottle we found in the kitchen was Glenn's ear medicine, which probably fell out of his corpse's pocket when it got dragged to the kitchen. Uh, Jean tried to lie about a decorative mirror confusing Kudo. That was the weirdest, like, random thing he could have come up with. Yeah. They could have just run with, this old man is senile. No, they ran with, there was just a mirror right in the middle of the breezeway. Because yeah. that wouldn't have been in the way at all. Um, let's see. Then he admitted that he's being intimidated by Tenderlender into hiding the bodies so the guy who Maggie saw could impersonate Glenn and set up a fake crime scene for Victor to see. And Godot is going to bring him to the stand. We are at Godot Coffee Counter 14. And yes, Yay, the worst Chris okay. is carrying the Mario movie. Yeah, the worst. We are in the bad timeline. This is a very bad timeline. This is the bad timeline. Um, anyways, <laughs> shall we jump in? Yeah. You ready to play yet another witness, Lemur? <laughs> <laughs> so happy. At least he, in theory, shouldn't have a uh, fake French, Russian, Italian accent. Uh, yeah, true, true. <laughs> January 8th, 121 p.m. Just record defendant lobby number one. So we're finally going to see the tiger on the stand. We've almost got this case won now, Nick. Oh, he's gonna I yell a lot. I wish I could agree. Huh? When I cross-examined Mr. Armstrong just now, he said he was just doing what the tiger told him to do. But Goodell picked up on it, remember? Pointed out that without proof, we don't know if what he testified is the truth. You mean, you think Mr. Armstrong was lying? I don't know. But if that's the line the prosecution takes, we could be in trouble. I get the feeling that we don't have the case of making evidence we need. I'm gonna guarantee you that is gumshoe. That's gumshoe, yeah. <laughs> yeah it says pal. Hey, pal. <laughs> Only one person calls us pal. Detective Gumshoe! What are you so jumpy about, Detective? Your hair is standing on end. Hey, that's the pot calling the kettle black, little miss top knot. It's not a top knot! Rude. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a top nut. Never mind about the hair. Just calm down, all right? I, I can't stand when I don't have a job to to do. I I, I get all wound up. Hi. <laughs> He's doing great today. No kidding. I have something you need me to do, pal. A anything. So, you're basically saying you're my henchman. <laughs> nice. Well, um... <clears throat> hey, I'm gonna take a jog back down to the precinct. 
I can get some prints analyzed for you. You've got an hour. An hour? The trial will have reconvened by then. But Nick, we still don't have a really decisive piece of evidence, right? True. True, bestie. Without some kind of trump card to pull out the bag, we're really stuck. You said you could get some fingerprint analysis done in an hour, right? You bet. In that case, would you mind checking the prints on uh, this for me? I'm gonna guess it's we need to figure out the ear medicine bottle. Since it has yeah. unidentified fingerprints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something just... Something about that just sort of seems right. <laughs> You're going back to the station anyway. Could you find out whose prints are on this? Oh, hey, that's the small bottle I gave you back at... Or, gave you... Gave back to you this morning, right? Yeah, I think it's time we solve the last mystery of who the prints on it belong to. <laughs> Check the prints on my attorney's badge. I need to know who's been borrowing it. <laughs> um, sure thing, pal. Actually, that's been gnawing at me. All right. Bobo, can I come too? <laughs> okay, I'll get this off to the lab right away. Just make sure you don't lose the case before I get back. I uh, can't make any promises. I hate you for <laughs> putting that in my no! brain. Now he has theme music. You can't stop it. Anyway, um, pretty much the final showdown, I guess. <laughs> that transition. <laughs> It's time to separate the phonies from the real guys. I'm the real guys. I'm so glad I got to say that after doing <laughs> nothing for the last five minutes. Um. <laughs> Anyways, 1.56 p.m. District Court for number four. Unfortunately, that is dead. It is. Court will now reconvene. Mr. Godot, did you find this Furio Tigre? Uh, 15? 15! Um, I even tamed him for you. It was a nice three cup job. No problem. So does that make it 17? 17 is, is that 18 cup. then? So we had 14. He tamed Furio Tigre in three cups. So that's 17. So this is number 18. I'll say, are we counting huh. not off screen coffee? That's a good question. I don't know. Are we? Um, let's. Fine, off screen coffee as well. Okay. Okay. So that's 18. 18! Mm -hmm. Same game! Guy's name may be Furio Tigre, but come on! It's always hard for me to say that Furio Tigre, and I'm like, I'm Hispanic. What am I doing? <laughs> I know it's wrong! Sorry, I have an existential crisis every time I say that. Hmm. Um, uh, pretty lively, be careful, he still bites. Very well, please show Mr. Tigre to the stand. Tigre. <laughs> oh god, I hate this. Um, witness, please state your name and occupation for the- Yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Hide under the table by Alice. There's room for me then too. I, uh, um, would you take your. Hmm. You guys are missing out on some really what great are you music. music. To me? Just like putting that out there. Um, n yeah. n nothing. I didn't say nothing. Honest. Who could have guessed that fear would induce a bad Brooklyn accent in the judge? Uh oh, this is not a good thing because I don't know what a Brooklyn accent sounds like. It's Joey Wheeler from Yu Gi Oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's literally him. Uh, I got business to take care of, you hear me? Brooklyn Rage! Anyway. Uh, so, who the hell called me into this hole? This hole? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, was it you, Spikey? Uh, no, of, of course not. It was the ju the ju Your Honor. Oh dear! I um, I seem to have dropped my pen. Where on earth is it? Don't mind me. Just carry on with the proceedings as normal. Oh my God. <laughs> That's it. We're doomed. <laughs> Uh, maybe you didn't hear me. I said, who the hell was it that called me in here? There is no need to shout. We can all hear you. What do you say? <laughs> there is no point in struggling. You're caught in a snare. The relentless snare of the law. And we go into another really good thing. And I'm the one that hauled you in. Yeah. Sure. Too, too cool. Don't let him get the better of you, Nick! Get out from under the table, Maya! No. <laughs> Let's start with the basics. You know about the incident in question, correct? God, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> uh, I don't know nothing about no stinking incident, mask boy. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to you know? You weather didn't boy. attend. <laughs> <laughs> weather boy, I love that. That, that news gets stuck in my head randomly. I hate it. Anyway. You mean you didn't attend the previous trial of Maggie Bird? Maggie who? I got more important things to do than watch courtroom dramas. Of course. Well, uh, perhaps you could give us your testimony then. Please tell us about what you did on the day of the murder. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. You didn't do me. I can promise you. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who set this up, didn't you? Um... Who's gonna regret the day you ruffled the tiger's fur? You hear what I'm saying? Maybe I should have brought a diaper with me today. Get a grip, Nick. Should have worn the brown pants. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, like, how much confidence do you have to have to go around telling people that you're the tiger, <laughs> and like yeah. not mean it ironically? <laughs> mm hmm. Hold on a second, I have to yell at my children. Okay. Give them love for me. They're playing whose mouth can I put in my mouth uh, <laughs> in the doggy door. Oh no. <laughs> my and Nick had matching diapers. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Are we done? Okay, we're done. Yep. Um, I don't know nothing about no murder. It'd be funny if... What? If he was actually in the cage behind the stand. <laughs> oh no, we were funny. It'd make a lot more sense. <laughs> uh, I was tied up with business in December last year, and all my, all of my time in the office. <laughs> I got whales lined up to borrow cash from Tender Lender every single day. When he makes that face. There's that TikTok trend thing that's, like, really popular. And mostly I only see it when people are making fun of it. But it starts off with the lady that, like, this, like, old, like, white, like, Karen-looking lady. Mm -hmm. Who, uh, just, like, if you're not at Hobby Lobby, where you at? <laughs> and, like, sticks her tongue out. It's so fucking annoying. And literally everything like, I've that. seen is, like, making fun of her. But that's what I think of when he sticks his tongue out like that. So I we're all that. the same. Uh, <laughs> if you, you ain't getting uh, loan sharked, where you at? Huh? <laughs> if you're not blackmailing a poor little waitress, where you at? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really hate this bitch. <laughs> uh, you just want to check my alibi? Just ask Violetta. 
Ah, at last I found my pen. <laughs> Very well then, Mr. Wright. Your cross-examination, please. Ah. <laughs> what is it? Please witness if you can refrain from shouting out like that. I know D kind of gave that guy in the blue place. <laughs> I don't know what it is about seeing, like, the word that, but I always think about Sebastian from The Little Mermaid, and I don't know yeah. why. Um, <laughs> he's kind of the right color, I'd like to point out. He's actually Sebastian Gingo. God damn it. That low life ain't. Oh, wait, that's not me! Damn. That low life ain't no lawyer. He's just punching. Punch. Uh, excuse me. He just punches away at stupid details till he wins. I mean, that's, he's uh, not. He's wrong. not wrong. Low life. Me? Uh, listen up, Smarty. Every time you ask me something that doesn't relate to the case, I'll break your fucking kneecap. <laughs> I'm gonna bill <laughs> you fifty thousand dollars. He's gonna borrow the cash from me. This doesn't seem like a legally binding agreement. Uh, that's one long contract I refuse to sign. And don't think it ain't gonna hurt when you ta when you tangle with the tiger. <laughs> I feel like it's suspicious that, like, frickin' Good Joe is the only one that's not afraid of him. Yeah, that's uh, kind of sus. I don't know. Like, it could be suspicious, but also I feel like not much uh, Ruffles Godot. Other than being yeah. out of coffee. I think if it's not coffee-related, he doesn't care. He's a honey badger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And Regina Berry is here to keep him under control. Yeah, we, we need Regina. <laughs> mm hmm. Um, ha, I love a good spectator sport. D d just a minute. Th that's really not. This witness is. Black. Oh, How could I put it? A hungry tiger roaming the urban jungle? <laughs> Get on his bad side, and he'll bite everyone's head off. Yours, too. Very well. I have no choice but to impose a penalty system here. Jesus. He's better be listening. I said I got business to take care of. Big business. If I don't split now, I ain't gonna catch my bills. The court will impose a penalty for any irrelevant pressing of witness testimony. But that's my favorite thing to do. It's yeah. literally the thing we're the best at. Uh huh. Keep that in mind as you begin your cross examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You can do it, Nick! Thanks, table. <laughs> <laughs> Come out from under there already. What you want? I was still alone. Nah. <laughs> I'm alone out here. One of us has to survive. It's going to be me. Why did I turn into Mickey Mouse when I'm scared? <laughs> Okay, um, let's see. I don't, you don't know to... nothing about... Oh, do you want me to read it? Or... Um, okay. uh, let me look through these really quick. Um, let's see. <laughs> Spent all my time in my office. If you would like to cheat, just let me know. Yeah, we might want to cheat on this, because uh, I don't want to get penalized. I'm guessing it's pressing on Violetta, but... Udamental, por favor. While you're doing that, we're gonna check over our evidence. What do we got? Uh, the sports paper, we have the magazine clipping, the job listings that I don't know why we still have, the launch special that is horrific, Scooter, the loan contract, uh, Victor's testimony, some floor plans, an autopsy report, uh, our crime scene photo, we've taken a look at a few times now, the coffee cup with everything on the wrong side, uh, the lottery ticket, the apron that Maggie was wearing, Apparently, she likes to wear the food. Um, potassium cyanide, this prescription bag, the calendar, the very clearly real attorney's badge, um, the computer virus. Sorry, I hmm? could, oh, can't see red, so maybe your three OT days just in <laughs> <laughs> 
solid. Whoa. That, that's possibly the best theory I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> you know what? You win, it's my canon. Man. Yeah. Uh, it's canon now. It does sound right. Uh, let's see. We have... like, look at that green screen. <laughs> exactly. But it's the red screen. Uh, the Millionaire Radio Flyer, the Lunchbox, Violetta's Medical Papers, and the Matches. Definitely the Lunchbox. All right. You ready? I'm ready. So, press T. Gray on the statement. I was tied up with business in December of last year. Spent all of my time in the office. Okay. We will press. Are you sure about that? We're talking about one month ago, you know. I think he knows when December is. I don't. Does he? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> this is Nick we're talking about. Nick! <laughs> you see these teeth? That's how sharp my secretary is. Um, sharp? Is he talking about Viola, Viola Cadaverini? Or how we just say hell? it how we're feeling today, um? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Follow <laughs> your he writes everything in my scheduler. <laughs> December, mainly in the office. That's what it says, so that's where I was. That seems like a rather mm, sketchy schedule. <laughs> there he goes again. What the Tony the Tiger did all December isn't the issue. Hmm. What's important is what he was doing on the day of the murder, so now what? Do we want to press or leave it? And it looks like we have the possibility of a penalty. We can't grape everything anymore. <laughs> it says to. <laughs> oh, okay. Press it. Like a grape. All right. We're graping it! <laughs> Mr. T. What do you want? Um... Uh, if you... by slapping the table, Nick. <laughs> if you want to mind going into a bit more into... <sighs> oh, This is a dead end, right? And you know it. Remember the rules. This is not. Um, no. It's essential that we establish the witness's alibi accurately. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree! So funny for him to be under the just be like, I agree! Why are both my characters under the table right now? <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> to prove that they have pants? I don't know. <laughs> we can't prove they don't. Anyway. Uh, the victim was killed on December 3rd. Were you in the office that day, too? Maybe you ain't listening. Of course I was. I never set a foot outside. Really? Never? never. The whole day? Never, Absolutely ever. never. Then he was to go home. No, it's me, and I'm itching my eyeball. Hold on. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, had, I had meetings all day with a bunch of cats waiting to do business with me. It's so... Not that I'm, like, good at accents in general. We all know this. <laughs> but I feel like having to read an accent is fucking different. Yeah, it's, <laughs> called, it's actually called eye dialect is what it's called. And it's horrific uh -huh. pretty much any time. Uh, I hate it. <laughs> he looks like Satan. I'd rather oh. deal with faux uh, Frenchmen. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> at least most of his stuff I can kind of just get away with. Talking. Yeah. Um, and I stumble over the weird. Um, anyway, <laughs> I ain't never seen that young kid before. I do believe the witness's last statement was important. Um, Mr. Godot, if you could please. Mr. Tigre, the court asks you to add that last statement to your testimony. Don't let an animal beat you. Be a man, your honor, and ask him yourself. Uh, with this statement, we need to present Glenn's calendar. Yeah, I thought, I was pretty sure that's what we were going with. Here we go. Mr. Tigre. You are full of shit. You claim you didn't know Mr. Glenn Elg. But it appears that Mr. Elg knew you. What? 
<laughs> Mr. Elg left this little note on his calendar. Meet with the tiger. And the date? December 3rd. De December 3rd? That's the day of the murder! So, Mr. Tigre, I submit that- Wow, I submit <laughs> that you did indeed know one, Mr. Glenn Elk. That was a weird-ass delivery of that line. Because of that very day of the incident, you met him. very sad to review. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's my, uh, I can see it. <laughs> That's me being uh, frustrated. That was a growl into a laughing. Uh, yeah, I think uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> What's a growl? Uh -huh. <laughs> not bad. He's actually not bad. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna be, the time I laugh or like text somebody, I should just be like growl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just messing with you to see how you were. Did you hear that, Nick? He said you're not bad. Uh oh, that, that's one compliment I can do without. Plus, he's lying through his teeth. Um, witness. Very sharp teeth. Please remember you're under oath. Lies will not be tolerated. Plot twist, John Armstrong is pretending to be French, but Furio Tigre is actually French. <laughs> God. Uh, you calling me a liar? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> Rut row. <laughs> Why is he <laughs> <-row>. do now? <laughs> uh, so you're saying that your claim to have never seen that kid before is the truth? I said I'm dead serious. You better believe that's the truth. <laughs> then I'd say that gives me time to enjoy another cup of pure black magic. Nineteen. 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 So question, how many cups of coffee can you have before you should start thinking about a hospital? Um, yeah. There is, hold on. Google it. More quick. This Google is more important right mm. now than anything else in the universe. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. Like, should we start worrying about this man? Granted, we, he's I wearing we a to like he's wearing a toaster on his face, so you'd think he's drinking alcohol in there, not coffee, but let's see. According to the Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. Up to 400 milligrams of caffeine a day appears to be safe for most healthy adults. That's roughly the amount of caffeine in four cups of brewed coffee, ten cans of cola, or two energy shot drinks. So four. Keep in mind that the actual caffeine content in beverages varies wildly, especially among energy drinks. So, so this uh, man needs a hospital five. stat. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, cartoon man, go to the cartoon hospital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boy. This man's heart sounds like a hummingbird. Um. <laughs> I'm scared. You, so this head, like subheadline, uh, you drink more than four cups of coffee a day. You might want to cut back if you're drinking more than four cups of caffeinated coffee a day or the equivalent, as you might have side effects such as. <laughs> Headache, insomnia, nervousness, irritability, frequent <laughs> urination, or ability to control <laughs> urination, fast heartbeat, <laughs> muscle tremors. Cadell is not well. <laughs> um, is he peeing himself right now? Because <laughs> what? <laughs> or does he have a diaper too? And we just don't well, like, know. here's my big question: like, coffee makes you pee like crazy, and hmm. he's drank how many of these cups? How I'd is be... he not needing to go to the bathroom every 20 minutes? Right. I'd be devastated. Like, damn. Like, I, go, I, I drink coffee before a road trip and I have to stop at every goddamn rest station. Yeah. Like... Yeah. <laughs> not good. What is this man's bladder? Is he okay? Yeah, he <laughs> Maybe he had bladder surgery and doesn't have one anymore. 
I feel I like he still needs to pee. I, I know it's not of his appendix. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. He's a cyborg. Probably. He's probably a cyborg. That explains the mask. Yeah. Um. um wait, a machine powered by coffee. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. I think it makes I'm sure sense. science be. I'm sorry. I'm j- just sitting here going coffee, and he's wearing a toaster. He's all the components of a well balanced breakfast. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, uh, a nice hot piping cup of dough in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <clears throat> too angry. Too angry oh. for me. But good jazz music. So mm-hmm. who's winning now? A plus jazz music. Uh, that is well. Lay up, please don't knock over my iPad. Thank you. The dough uh, pancakes. That is while you testify for the court again, Mister Teacher. Oh yes. Um, would you mind indulging the court witness? Never actually met the victim. That's gotta be alive right there. It's time I nailed this guy. Do I still get a penalty when I ask him questions? Well, so far it's been relevant, so no. Uh, I ain't no liar. I never met Glenelg. Uh, there was some lame guy with that name, though. Wanted to borrow cash from me. Um... My dad's getting home, so we're about to get into Bark Central. Um, I set up a meeting with the guy at my office, Tender Lender. Far less yellow than I was expecting. <laughs> um, I went around for him, but he never showed. He ain't ever shown, Jesus, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I ain't never been to that Trebion joint this year. Uh, we have matches to prove that you did. Yeah. I see. That all seems perfectly logical. You had arranged to meet with the victim, but he didn't show up. I've heard it's pretty hard to keep appointments <laughs> when you're dead. When you're dead! <laughs> Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mid-sip <laughs> of water. <laughs> Uh, didn't I tell you I got a big deal going down today? Um, I ain't gonna make my bus now. I'm I'm gonna have to take the express train. That that bill's going straight to you, right? I mean, maybe if you hadn't lied in your last testimony, you could have made it. Sure. <laughs> So am I correct? It's the matches on that last statement. I feel like it's the matches. Yes. Oh yeah. It, I feel like the it's throwing me off because it says like uh, present matches at this statement, and for some reason it's like I feel like it should be like this statement present matches. <laughs> yeah, I can so see I that. get it. <laughs> Mr. Yes, right. T. Gray, uh, is there something you'd like to tell the court about these matches? matches. What are you talking about? What are you talking about, Willis? <laughs> I don't actually even know what that's from. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's, uh, God, I used to know this. Damn, it was like on Jeopardy or some shit. Oh. <laughs> anyway, um, we found them <laughs> in your office at Tender Lender. They're from that restaurant. <laughs> it's uh, I was looking up the time period from different strokes the TV series from that was in like the late 70s early 80s mm. right, so like right. it's in the American lexicon and I've I don't think I've ever actually seen this show so yeah. anyway <laughs> <laughs> what you talking uh, about Willis? anyway uh, yeah different strokes yeah uh what what's Willis uh, anyway, it's gonna haunt me forever. Uh, okay, I'll Google that after. Um, if you've really never been to Trevion before, 
what was a book of the restaurant's matches doing on your desk? You've been snooping around my stuff now too, wise guy. Uh, what are you? What are you? Jesus. <laughs> what are you, my ball and chain? Ain't no broad controlling me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Damn. Oh, that's me. Order! Order! <laughs> <laughs> well, Witness, I've played the judge for two games now, and it still just went over my head. Um, I think it's time you started telling us the truth, don't you? For how long have you been since I've been freaking uh, Phoenix, and I still want to read over <laughs> Mana. Like... Well, apparently the judge and I just don't have that connection. Um, so, sorry. Uh, like, uh, he growled. That would be me if I saw Edgeworth on screen right now. Like, no, no. <laughs> uh, I'm terribly sorry. Forgive me. Ain't no pussy cat. It took me. I was like, I'm not gonna say that. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't go back on what I said. We are twelve years old. But okay, I was at the joint that, or at the joint that day. W what? Uh, but listen, good, all right, right? <laughs> um. I uh, might have been there, but I still never met that kid. Well, well. Looks like an order just came in for another testimony. <laughs> <laughs> no, every time I look at the tiger, I just... He looks like a Yu-Gi-Oh character reject. It's... Just here. Anyway, um, I'm this close to proving it was him. He did meet Glen Elk that day. And he did put poison in his coffee. He must have. I mean, look at that tongue. He's doing that Miley Cyrus thing. <laughs> it's the Miley Cyrus face. <laughs> it's Miley Cyrus face. I was supposed to meet with the kid at the restaurant. With the kid with the at the kid. restaurant that afternoon. Uh, when I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. Uh, the guy was laid out over the table, stiff as concrete. Uh, I figured if the place wasn't hot already, it was gonna be, so I split. I heard the cop sirens on my way out, and I went straight back to my office. Uh-oh, I did not see an obvious contradiction there. Um, I see. You didn't actually meet with him in the end, then. Well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Uh, yes, Your Honor? Hmm. Uh, hold it. If I wait around here any longer, I ain't even gonna make the normal express. No more stupid questions. Ha, no problem. Uh, 20? 20! Yep. 20! Oops, that is a 6. <laughs> Yay. Uh, anytime Trite uh, presses you on something irrelevant, I'll see he pays a penalty. Mr. Godot! That's my job. <laughs> He's taking your job, old man! Uh, I'm not a jailbreak. Um, <laughs> your job is to slam that little hammer of yours and call a guilty verdict. So do it. Y yes, sir! Special Express ain't cheap, right? So use no since he is paying. Just so use no since you're paying. Oh, man. Doesn't the rule of law mean anything around here? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Even I know that. <clears throat> Alright, um, uh, well. When I opened the door to the joint, I saw one ugly scene. Okay. Present Trey Beyond Floor Plan. Oh, I get where we're going with that there. So, just so that everyone is on the same page as I am, uh, look at where the, uh, victim would have been sitting. 
and there's a wall right there between it and the door. Yep. Apparently we are taking this very literally. Mm -hmm. You're something of a loan collecting pro, aren't you, Mr. Tigre? No one escapes the tiger's clutches. Alright, well, I'm something of a lie detecting pro. Nick, where are you going with this? Huh. Uh, I'm, I'm getting there. <clears throat> And no one escapes the phoenix's clutches. Oh, oh Nick. <laughs> oh, that, that felt cringy to say. <sighs> I think it's time we got something straight. What's this, Trite? A new line of irrelevant questioning? Is every time we open our mouth going to be called irrelevant, man, dude? Like, come on, man. Let us be. These are the floor plans of the crime scene. You say you were standing at the entrance, Mr. T. Gray. From here, your field of vision would have covered an area something like this. Indeed. Or, the, like my flashlight. <laughs> the witness would have had a clear view of the victim's seat. Isn't that what I just said? I saw the back of the kid's head. Unfortunately for you, that is not possible. If the court would think back, you'll remember that between each of the tables... ...is a tall partition. Why, that's true! Are you going to tell us that we can't prove that the partition was there that day? Oh God. Now look at the plans again. The truth is painfully obvious. From the entrance, the field of vision of any customer walking in ends here. I was going to make an argument for that stupid mirror. <laughs> so from the entrance of Trey Beyond, you couldn't have seen the victim see. Liar! Ain't calling you a truther. <laughs> Well, you did see the victim that day because you met with him. Objection. That is table. Wrong. Have you ever gotten the old man's testimony yesterday? Uh, the victim was alone at his table. Objection. But the defense just proved the point to be moot. Let's say that. Anyway, the victim, sorry, victim witnessed by Mr. Kudo was not Glenn Elg, but a fake. What? Come on, Godot, keep up. In order to have Mr. Kudo falsely testify, the real killer posed as the victim he had just killed and acted out a charade. A that, no. that will do. This trial has gone on long enough without the obvious question being answered. Who exactly was this real killer who impersonated the victim? You say the killer murdered Glen Elg, and then impersonated his victim in a performance for Victor Kudo? In that case, Mr. Wright, reveal the identity of this criminal to the court. It's gotta be... Although, how the hell do you mistake this man? Had to be Tigre, right? It's the answer. How do you mistake this man? For yeah. I'm just telling this you man. <laughs> I, um, I don't know. Maybe he was uh, special less effects makeup. spiky with a beanie. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, I was thinking more the He's skin color. <laughs> Homestuck. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the killer is Furio Tigre. No one else could have done it. What? Well, witness. <laughs> <laughs> now that's cute. Yeah, it was definitely a Maggie Bird. <laughs> Uh, you think you can pin this on the tiger? 
Maybe you just don't understand. The tiger is king of the jungle. What? So it is, you can see it again. Come on, you got the guts. You, you can't th threaten me, Mr. Tigre. It's the defense! Go ahead and tell the witness, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wright has left the building. Uh, sounds like it must be you, old man. You've got guts, I'll give you that. <laughs> Mr. Wright! Do not leave me to handle this alone! <laughs> Perhaps I can end this embarrassment. M Mr. Godot! 21? 21! 21! We had so many cups of coffee, our coffee can drink. Uh, in these states, obviously. Uh, <laughs> go back over Mr. Godot's testimony one more time. Uh, the old man didn't just see the victim. Oh, no, no, no. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Was the victim he saw the real victim or not? That doesn't matter. Yeah, where's the bailiff? There's security. <laughs> um... The fact remains, he saw the accused put the poison into the coffee. Ooh. Poison, poison specifically. <laughs> yes, poison. it was yes. the waitress who poisoned the coffee. Very oh. impressive, Mr. Godot. <clears throat> Waiting for my absence to launch your attack. Aha! <laughs> my plan all along. Ah. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> A solid light delivery, I know. <laughs> um, found your pen at last, Trite? It, it, it was in my pocket. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Mr. Kudo witnessed two people that day. He saw the victim, the supposed Mr. Glenelg, and the waitress from behind. Yes. Your point, Mr. Wright? Or if he was looking at her behind, I don't know. I think the conclusion is obvious. Ahem. If this Glen Elg was really the killer in disguise, then surely it's possible the waitress was also a part of the show. What? You mean the waitress was an imposter as well? The defendant, Miss Bird, fell unconscious immediately after the incident. And someone used her fainting to hatch an elaborate plan to pin the murder on her. How long was she out? A lot. Who on earth was it? Who was this waitress that Mr. Kudo witnessed? Well, it had to have been... Violetta. Who, who is this woman? He, uh, her name is Viola Viola Cadaverini. <laughs> yes, she's an employee of Tenderlander. He's making a big mistake. Do you know who Violetta's grandfather is? You better be going home in an armored truck tonight if you know what I mean. Stop uh, shaking, Nick! You can't up a maraca! <laughs> where, where was I? <clears throat> yes, the defendant, Miss Bird, has stated the following. Uh, well, when I took the copy over to the victim's table, uh, it's true, there was another customer in the restaurant. Um, she was sort of creepy. And she kind of... And had a kind of cackling laugh. There are just too many contradictions in this case. The second man at the victim's table was nobody but Miss Bird. Uh, seems to have seen 
Uh, the earpiece worn by the victim in his left ear when that eardrum was ruptured. And the radio show he was supposedly listening to half an hour after it was over. There is only one logical explanation that clears up all of these contradictions. The whole incident took place twice. Once for real, and once for show. And Mr. Furio Tigre, the only person who could have committed the crime, is you. Witness, what have you got to say? They saw me. That's cute. I am sorry. Who's alright? I could do a guy with I could do with a guy like you around. I don't want that. <laughs> what do you mean? <sighs> okay. I'm in on this game. You are in a game. I keep thinking every time he like holds his shirt like this that he's just gonna like rip it off like a stripper. Right. And we're gonna yeah. have a musical number. <laughs> yep, do it. Magic Mike this shit. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna have to charter a jet to get to my meeting now, but I'm gonna give you one more thing to think about before I go. Yes, he is trying to show us his titties. <laughs> <laughs> Something to think about? Listen, my head is no thoughts brain empty. I think that's impossible. Um... You's got it all wrapped up nice, huh, right? But you's missed one real important thing. Uh, but what can that be? Um, I was in the joint that day. And I met that kid, too. But I couldn't have poisoned him, you's here. What? Do you really expect us to believe you now, Mr. Tigre? Huh. What a troublemaker. Troublemaker? 22? 22! 22! I don't know about you. <laughs> uh, and there's like the musical number! To... <laughs> Yay! It's like we're going to need another one for the road. Sniffing that shit. What, what if it's not coffee? <laughs> Indeed. Witness, you will explain yourself to the court. I will give you one more chance to testify. What I'm happened sure that if he growls at you, you'll let him do whatever he wants. Well, details. <laughs> what happened that day at Trebian between yourself and the victim? Now the coops. It's actually hot cocoa. <laughs> it's yeah. sugar high. You guys uh, went on a completely different area than I went. I sat there and went <laughs> hot toddy. Um Yeah, no, I it's that, that you know you know that one, you who you yahoo, you who what is it? <laughs> It's that. Yeah, it's <laughs> It's just Nesquik. Um. Yeah. Uh, Oval yeah. team for the old people. <laughs> oh god, help. Help me. Um, yeah, I loaned old cash about $100,000. Uh, that date. Oh, great. Honey, come here, buddy. Hi. You can't come in here right now, buddy. You need to listen to Grandma. It's, but I've been so great. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you want to help me read this line, honey? Before you go? Okay, Maverick's going to help me. Um, that day, uh, we was due to have a little chat. The kid uh, had hit his paycheck. His payback date, see? So anyway, he tells me he's got no way to pay up. I'm about to flatten the guy when he starts screaming. 
Yes, I won. I won a half a million bucks. He got lucky, you know. Real lucky. He's gonna launch himself over the bed. (laughs) (laughs) Um, If that waitress hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. But, average. Now, I see that the principal amount you loaned to Mr. Elg was $50,000. Yeah, well, he's got the big to take in account. Interest builds up fast, you know. That's faster than fast. $100,000 is twice as principal. And the repayment deadline was December 3rd, the day of the incident in question. Uh, yeah, he was, the, he was one lucky kid. Maverick, lay down. Good boy. Um, he got that half a million just in time. Uh, so I have no reason to kill the kid. He kind of just admitted that he was going to. Um, <laughs> which was a little bit of a crime. Um, and if I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. Motive? Hmm. Has to have one, but what is it? My god, I think it's related to the MC Bomber virus. It has to be the virus. Am I going to get penalized if I start pressing him? Uh, press Tigre on the statement. If that waitress uh, hadn't done what she'd done, everything would have been over. Usually we'd go through all this, but again, I don't know if I'm going to get penalized. Um, The waitress, you mean. The girl with the glass in the defendant's chair. Who else could I mean? Uh, If she hadn't gotten in the way, things would have been bada bing, bada boom, over (laughs) and done with. I was waiting for that one. (laughs) Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, maybe I should push a little on this. All right, are we going to ask about what Maggie did or ask how things would have been? Uh, what she did? Nope. No? Oh, no. That's not what I meant to say. <laughs> want, I, <laughs> I meant to say the we second. Want to incriminate himself. Y- yes. I have no brain cells. <laughs> Maya, get out from under the t- table and get me my brain cells. Uh, what do you mean things would have been over and done with? Are you all there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back. That's all. I'm a businessman. Uh, it was all coming together before the waitress got in the way. Hmm. As far as I can tell from the witness's testimony, other than recouping his loss, his loan, uh, Mr. Tigre had no motive for killing the victim. Witness, you will amend your testimony to reflect what you just said. The tiger's motive, huh? Uh, this... Okay, so this statement present um, the MC bomb or MC bomber. Yeah, MC bomber. Just stay here. Oh, and we're so gonna, you yep. just intended to get back the hundred thousand dollars, Mr. Alex? Oh, you correct? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, Maverick. Oh my God. Uh oh. <laughs> He's wiggle verbing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're, he's going to kick my iPad over. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I loaned the guy the cash, so that's my right. Unfortunately for Mr. Elg, I don't believe the $100,000 is what you were really oh, after. Uh, what are you getting at, Trite? Uh, what else would be um, what else would a money lender be after other than money oh the money lender was after money but money in a totally different league 
The kind of money that a single disc like this would fetch. What is that? A computer virus, Your Honor. A virus called MC Bomber. A computer virus? What does one of those do? Computer virus is a program that wreaks havoc on the insides of a computer. A computer? <laughs> what does one of those do? <sighs> I guess the beard is the only part of his honor that is from the Stone Age! <laughs> I'll explain it to you later, Your Honor. Right now, this is the important point. A virus like MC Bomber would be worth several million dollars on the black market. S several million dollars? Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glenn Elk had no way to repay the money is crucial. What? Mr. Glenn Ellard was a programmer, a highly skilled programmer. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elg put up in order to borrow the money. Objection! Sorry, I was taking a picture of my dog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. The witness motive was getting to. Did you send it to, to me? Get a hold of that program. I will send it to you. Maverick, please do not chew up my pumpkin pillow. We need that pick after stream. <laughs> pick sorry, it didn't happen. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that the witness motive was to get a hold of that program? Exactly. Uh, the witness may have poor fashion sense, but he has, uh, is by no means an idiot, right? I was honest about that. Uh, a man like him could get his hands on one million dollars without re uh, resorting to murder. Of course he could. Provided that he had time. But what if he had needed the money right then? When the pressure's on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory, Mr. Wright. Would you care to share it with us? Why did Mr. Tigre need money to the tune of one million dollars? We're gonna go with the medical papers. Yeah. Yep. In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. About six months ago, you were involved in a traffic accident, weren't you? An accident involving a car and a scooter, in which a young woman was injured. She was taken to the hospital where she underwent surgery. How much a disc do you <laughs> know? <laughs> These medical papers document the treatment of the young woman in question. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. Am I the only one that, like, saw the Austin Powers thing in my head? Yes. So. One million trillion dollars. <laughs> and yet, when the payment was due last month, you somehow managed to pay it in full. One million dollars? A preposterous sum! Someone should sue these HMOs! Huh. No one would pay a bill like that. As the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up dead as a board. Except for this is the US, so actually, probably not, but... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're in the U.S. That's who the U.S. we're talking about. But Mr. Tigre had no choice but to pay! Because his very life depended on it. Or else he would be dighted and killed instead. Order! 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 You say his life depended on it, Mr. Wright. Indeed it did. Simply because the injured woman was none other than Viola Cadaverini. Did you say 
Cadaverini. Bruto Cadaverini. Mob boss in charge of all underworld activities in the city and doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. <laughs> he just drank some to do a spit take. <laughs> Look, sometimes the drama of the situation requires it. Yeah. Your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? Makes sense. You were desperate to acquire the one million dollars Bruno Cadaverini demanded of you. So desperate, in fact, that you decided to sacrifice Glenn Elk's life to pay your debt. Bitch. On that day of the murders, Mr. Tigre's sole intention was to get his hands on this CD. Glen Elk had no way of paying back the hundred thousand dollars, and Mr. Tigre knew it. But then a miracle happened. Which won the lottery! <laughs> kind that Mr. Tigre would prefer to stay never happened. But he can't, and neither can I. Oh, he's on the loose. <laughs> okay, good. Good redirect, Maverick. Um, the lottery win? He's fuming. Your toaster is fuming. Exactly! At the 11th hour, Mr. Elg won a half a million dollars on the lottery. Which left Mr. Tigre with no way of getting his hands on the all important CD. At least, no legitimate way. He just happened to have some salt potassium bay. cyanide. Salt Bay! So he salt bayed, and he resorted to a legitimate me. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I know words. That's crazy. How much legal trouble will we get for presenting someone else's medical bills, and how much can we get away with because <laughs> she gave them to us? Hmm. Yeah. We're not gonna talk about that. Uh, he, mur he murdered Glenn Elg and then made his next move to frame Maggie Bird for the crime. Mr. T. Gray poses Glenn Elg, while Viola Cadaverini played the role of Miss Bird. And then they reenacted the whole thing in order to establish a witness. Witness being the one we all heard testify yesterday, Mr. Victor Kudo. Like I said, Trite, that's crazy. No one would could pull off a stunt like that. For starters, there's no way a uh, chef the chef could have been kept in the dark about it. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't in the dark about it. But Mr. Armstrong was in on it from the very beginning. Have you forgotten already, Mr. Godot? Mr. Armstrong owed the witness money too. Half a million dollars, in fact. He had no choice but to go along with Mr. Tigre's plan. Da -da -da -da. He was intimidated as fuck. Order! Order! Silence or I will- <laughs> you put a you put on a good show, Spiky. Maya, can you call me Spiky from now on? <laughs> kind of no. like that name. Damn it! <laughs> um, if you want to stay alive in the loan shark business, you gotta be careful. Um, you saying I dressed up like that kid created a witness to frame somebody? Um, if I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. I agree. You do. 
Despite your appearance, you are very careful. That's why you took one more precaution. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. What? Another one, Mr. Wright. Uh, interesting. Why don't you fill us all in, right? Oh, all three. <laughs> A trick that he performed to frame the accused Uh, keep the badge. Oh. The badgie. Duh, I get it. Okay, that's what we're talking about. I'm oh. like, what? What oh. other trick? What on earth is that? What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. Consider yourself insulted, your honor. Mr. Tigre. Um, you didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. A month ago in this very court, you posed as me! So basically, we're getting that this man uh, cosplays in his spare time. Uh, me, Dio! What? That's... that's... The truth. He cosplayed me. But the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. Yeah, oh. no. <laughs> now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? No doubt it was you, standing in here, this very court, a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most disreputable, shabby defense I had ever seen! Uh, can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the accused here a month ago was this man? Uh, are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Oop. Hmm. Hey! Forget about it, yeah? <laughs> Forget about it, yeah? <laughs> Wait, what? Forget about it. <laughs> Do something like that, not me. <laughs> you you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? I hate that his hair goes down like a cat. Like, you don't <laughs> want to be ill. Have you no pride, sir? Twenty three. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't have a song for that. <laughs> um. Sorry. <sighs> Scratch my nose. Uh, it wasn't a matter of pride. This isn't a matter of pride. And in case you didn't know, trite. Here in court, we deal with people's lives. <laughs> Mr. Godot is right. Your Honor! Speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The I am attorney, not. I'm red! The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge with the vested power to hand down a verdict. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. No! If the defense has no further evidence, the court will now excuse the witness. The circumstances surrounding Mr. Tigre are dubious for sure, but not conclusive. But we've come so far! Wait, show him the tie and the, the, and the suit and... We didn't grab that. Cosplay. We thought it would be really conspicuous to just grab that. <laughs> you should have grabbed the cosplay. You say he impersonated Glen Elg. You say he impersonated you. But none of that adds up to a murder charge. Is there an impersonation of a lawyer charge?
Yeah, there should be. I'm pretty sure it is. I mean, I, well, because you can get in trouble for impersonating, like, a doctor. Mm-hmm. And a police, and, like, a police officer. officer. I'm going to guess that he might get in trouble for at least performing law without a, degree. Um, a, without a license. Yeah, a license, yeah. And a badge that you, you can lawyer of. You can represent yourself without issue, but I don't believe you can represent someone else without a license. Where's your okay. jersey? Where's your license? What's the, what's the joke from uh, one of the Toy Story movies? Like, I don't think this man is a medical professional. <laughs> Um, you don't have a shred of evidence that the witness poisoned the victim's coffee (laughs) (laughs) sucks to be you right Don't mess with the tiger. Or you're gonna get mauled. You've got that? All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. I was so close to getting him with the admit his own guilt. <laughs> Looks like I won't be needing a refill. But... <laughs> I just had one more piece of evidence. One more. One more piece of evidence and maybe I could get Maggie off the hook. This witness's cross-examination is over. You are free to go, Mr. Tigre. Where's the objection? There we go, the hold it. The hold it! (laughs) Ah, I'm coming to... There he is. Wait! Detective! Detective Gumshoe, my hero! Uh, Sorry I took so long, Paul. I. I, uh. (laughs) Take everything on this. My badge, the worst. Here it is. My heart's pounding on this, too. What is it, Detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. What? Also, never call me pal again. How dare you? hope it's the cosplay. <laughs> I mean, he had the bottle. <laughs> Both of the cosplay. January 8th, 2 48 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number One. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results back from the lab. The results? About the prints, pal, from this medicine bottle. Oh! So. Do you know who the prince belonged to now? Uh, do you think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. Yes, we do, but... So, tell us! They're the tigers, right? I knew it! (laughs) You bet. There's crystal over the bottle. All over the bottle. Uh, they're Furio Tigre's paw prints, all right. That's great! A clue, a clue. We've got him now, Nick! <sighs> What's wrong with you? You've hardly said a word since Detective Gumshoe got here. He's laid everything on the line for this, Nick. I know. Look, I'm sorry. This is kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on the bottle now. Huh? What? Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial 
is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glenn Elg's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle... It really doesn't make any difference now. I knew it. Great. No matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Hey! No, it's okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. This is uh, our last chance to help Maggie. Um, I think we should reset the coffee counter with every case. Yeah, I think so. Like, because I mean, he says that he ca like he solves cases or he like case closed, you know, within what, what seventeen cups of coffee. He's already mm -hmm. blown his uh, yeah. number, obviously. Um, because <laughs> we stress him out. <laughs> him out. And so did the tiger. Um, he did. And I've been working on some useless piece of evidence the whole time. All right. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. Um. Oh, hey, it's Maggie. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe? M Maggie! It's your bae. You've been working on something for me? Sorry. Um, sorry I let you down, Maggie. Uh, I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. Really sorry. I missed the rest of his thing. Uh, detective Gumshoe, wait. Uh, we're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Goodness, with a lag. He's gone. Isn't there anything we can do now, Nick? I wish there was. Where's that damn cosplay? Gumshoe worked so hard to get that evidence. If only there was some way I could use it. Uh, we could use Mia right now. January 8th through 4 p.m. District Court number 4. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I granted you a recess so you could prepare this decisive evidence you've discovered. Um, yes. 24? 24! Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> um... Don't keep us all in suspense, Trite. Show us. Uh, naturally. Oh, uh, we can assume it's evidence that will actually stand up in court, can't we? Good mm. old 24th cup of coffee! I don't know why it turned into, like, pig. Oh, uh, was a Phineas and Ferb. Anyway, <laughs> think... Phoenix. Just the doofish merch theme. Um, don't let Gumshoe's hard work go to waste. How much more of my time are you gonna waste? I ain't been to court before. No, I ain't been to no court before. But you lawyers sure know how to blow things out of the out of proportion. No doubt, given the nature of the evidence, it will speak for itself. Nevertheless, you will talk us through it, Mr. Wright. Well, I know I can't prove anything new with this evidence. I'm really backed into a corner right here, but maybe if he thinks he's got me beat, he'll let his guard down a bit. Don't keep us waiting any longer, Mr. Wright. Present this final, decisive piece of evidence to the court. You're gonna make me do it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the defense's final piece of evidence. Isn't that the victim's... Your Honor. 
naturally, the court is already aware of the contents of this bottle. However, interesting new information has come to light. We have clearly identified some fingerprints on it. Fingerprints belonging to you, Mr. T. Gray. What? But, Mr. Wright, what conclusion are you hoping to draw from this new information? Everyone here knows what this bottle is. Except one man. One person in this courtroom should theoretically be in the dark. My prints are on that pansy looking bottle. Is that what you saying? Well, what the hell is that it anyway? We gotta start lying in the court? Phony trial, a phony lawyer, and a phony clue. Everything about this case has been phony. Except for the payphone. <laughs> Seems like the perfect excuse for some phony evidence. Mm. Mr. Tigre, this is the decisive piece of evidence that will prove your guilt. Why? Because it contains... Does it contain Mr. Armstrong's oils, the victim's ear medicine, or potassium cyanide? You know, we're not under oath. We can lie all that we want. Yeah, I sort of feel like this is somehow unethical, but also I don't care enough to uh, argue against it. So, we ready potassium to claim cyanide. that this has potassium cyanide in it? <laughs> yep. Yeah, the oil. <laughs> anyway. This bottle contains potassium cyanide. P potassium cyanide? The poison used to murder Mr. Elk, your honor. How is Godot not, like, on top of us right now? Like, excuse me? The victim's killer used this very bottle. And on this bottle, Mr. Tigre, we found your fingerprint. Well, how do you explain that? <laughs> you make a good clown, you know that? That's what Maya tells me every day. Mm -hmm. What? Um, you ain't never gonna get that this to stick. He's just making me laugh now. Being a cheap bluff like that's gonna fool the tiger. A bluff? Uh, I can see straight through you, Phoenix, right? Uh, that ain't the bottle with the cyanide in it. Uh -oh. uh, no, this is the bottle we found traces of the poison in. Don't mess with the tiger, are you gonna get ripped to shreds? The cyanide bottle was brown, it was made of glass. Bingo. You know that. Uh, that cheap piece of trash don't look nothing like it. Gotcha. Congratulations, you played yourself! <laughs> oh, well, 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 look. The consequences of your own actions. Gotti. At last. What? Why has everyone gone quiet? I said that bottle. Is this the bottle you're referring to? Yeah, that's it. That's the bottle with the cyanide, the cyanide was in. Uh, but you ain't gonna find my prints on that bottle. Don't let that crazy looking suit fool you, you people. That lawyer's just playing games. Uh, tell him, Mr. <laughs> Prosecutor. Tell him why. The, tell that guy where to go. He still haven't figured it out. 
Don't you realize what you just said? Uh, what I said? What did I just say? You were summoned to this court for the first time earlier today. If you really had nothing to do with the murder, you shouldn't have known all the little details. For instance, you shouldn't have known that what kind of bottle the potassium cyanide was in. Uh -oh. <laughs> but just now, you slipped up in front of every single person in this courtroom. Uh -oh. You described the exact bottle used by the killer to hold the poison. Oh look, the consequences of your own actions! Nice. <laughs> uh -oh. love, love to see it. We love to see it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you just don't know who you's messing with. <laughs> I am the tiger. I control millions of dollars on the black market. You, I, for some reason, I was like, it's Phoenix now. Uh, <laughs> you think I'm gonna let some, or let some jumped up soup get the better of me? Sure. The last piece of evidence was phony. But that's just what you deserve. The phony trial with a phony lawyer. It was all played out by you, the biggest phony of all. Sir, are you okay? Well, oh, oh shit, what the fuck? So yeah, I'm gonna have dreams tonight. Oh, I'm so <laughs> did, did he just yell so loud that the lights went off? What's going on? He broke the lights? It looks like a blackout. I don't know why I made the bailiff sound cute. Um... <laughs> Well done, Trite. You killed the lights. <laughs> Saved my 17th cup of coffee just for you. That it was lie. not 17, you liar. Bitch, we are 24. <laughs> and even if you subtract those three that we counted, it's still not 17. Yeah. Favorite. Uh, while you watch the police restrain your prey. Mr. Wright, you caught a tiger by his toe, but if this one hollers, <laughs> he won't be let go. <laughs> I hate this. Now then. No. How are things going with Mr. Tigre, Mr. Godot? Um, great. Uh, he's being arrested on suspicion of murder of Glen, El Glen Eld, your honor. Fortunately for us, we managed to rectify a very grave error. Miss Bird was found guilty in the absence of a genuine defense attorney. Yes, she was. This was mm. not a moment for you to interject, Mr. Wright. Damn it. And in the absence of genuine evidence. <laughs> but the tiger made one mistake. Indeed. He very nearly got away with everything, if it weren't for that one slip of the tongue. Furio Tigre <laughs> is a truly frightening criminal. Huh. A truly frightening one. Is that defense attorney over there? I don't. Well, I, don't. I am now in a position to deliver my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird, not guilty. Guilty! Woo! <laughs> da, 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 da. I don't know what the victory music is for you. <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned.
We did it! Da 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 Woo! January 4, 10 p.m. Just record the final lobby number one. Mr. Bright, I, I, I... I'm at a loss for words. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. <laughs> Same. Congratulations, Maggie! <laughs> Same. <laughs> I was so mad when Mr. Wright landed uh, me in all that trouble a month ago. Uh, but now I feel like I can forgive him. Hey! That wasn't me, Maggie! That was the tiger! Look, Nick! In the doorway! Detective Gumshoe. Whoa, wait! Wait, 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 wait. Uh, oh, I missed. I completely missed his line. Uh, Detective Gumshoe. Oh, uh, oh, congratulations, Maggie. Thanks. Oh my god, am I gonna flirt myself? Is this what's <laughs> happening? I, I knew you were innocent all, all along. Uh, why don't I? Uh, why didn't you say that in your testimony then? Poor Gumshoe. Huh? Can't win. <laughs> oh, well, I was. Under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry, that's better than his actual line was. Um. <laughs> Under pressure. <laughs> anyway, um, wait up, detective. He just ran off. It was probably my song. I'm sorry. Maggie, why are you being so hard on him? He busted his butt for you. It's thanks to him that we got the medication bottle. That wasn't even of any use. But... <laughs> Only because Mr. Wright used it so cleverly. Said carefully. <laughs> he does nothing carefully. No. no. Uh, Detective Kimchi was yeast. just running around in circles. I yeet evidence. <laughs> Poor guy. Looks like she still isn't ready to forgive him. Can't you put in a good word for him, Nick? Word. Yeah, Maya's right. I should help Gumshoe out. It's clear he needs it. Uh, Maggie. Hmm. You know, Detective Gumshoe's been really worried about you through all of this. I wanted to believe that, sir. But on the first day of trial, of the trial, <laughs> uh, he practically gave the judge a free pass to lock me up. He didn't have any choice, Maggie. He's a detective. He has to report the facts. Uh, he doubted me, that's why. He thought I, I might have done it. Let's give her a weenie <laughs> lunchbox. I've got to prove to her that Gumshoe really cares about her. Oh, it's weenie time! <laughs> I know. I'll give her a little present to celebrate her freedom. Have some weenies. Like weenies. <laughs> Here you are. A present to celebrate your freedom. That's... In this house, we only talk food. <laughs> a present from Detective Gumshoe. Made with tons of love. He said you lost weight, and he was worried about you. Detective Gumshoe? I... <laughs> we need to give her the lottery <laughs> ticket as, that she was accused of stealing <laughs> as a present. Oh. It's okay. I oh. sat there and went, should I give her the cardboard badge that we got from our fake. <laughs> we <Yes>. should <laughs> That would have been great. Um, I actually really like weenies, you know. 
Did you guys hear that? I'm pretty hungry myself, you know. Why did that sound like terrifying? The Argh! like you know, it's like a monster. Yeah, the trial dragged on a bit today, didn't it? Sorry. Um. Um. Is it okay if I eat this now? Um. Yeah. Oh. So. How is it, Maggie? Sorry. It's it's really good. The best Wheaties in this side of the precinct. <laughs> oh, the case of phony versus genuine comes to an end. The false allegations surrounding Maggie have all been cleared up. Thank God. Just like this box. <laughs> and who knows? Maybe a whole new chapter of her life is about to start. Got herself a male wife. <laughs> All right, and we have hit the end of this case. <laughs> Yay! And we have unlocked episode four, Turnabout Beginnings. <laughs> and we got a bitch to uh, talk about. So I love Edgeworth. Sure did it. Can't wait. Love Edge Boy. So, um, next stream is Thursday, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific, like normal. Um, we will be starting Turnabout Beginnings, and anyone got anything else to talk about before we wrap up? Don't have a flashback. Just don't do it. No more flashback. Anyway, that's all for me. Uh, I mean, yeah. All right. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. <laughs> get vaccinated if you can. Please mm -hmm. encourage your loved friends and loved ones to get vaccinated if they have the not love. already. Mm -hmm. um, please be kind to of yourself Phoenix. and others. <laughs> and make good choices. <laughs> yes. And take pictures of your dog, mm -hmm. just like Lemur. So now that you've stolen <laughs> my entire uh, sign off. Uh... <laughs> uh, we will leave you okay, with. Okay. Uh, um, under pressure. Bye, guys. <laughs> under pressure. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>